Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another video. So today I want to talk about how you can get started wireframing using the Concepts app for iPad. So you see right here, there's a grid option that's going to be very useful. When you actually select it, you can make all these different changes like crumpled paper, or changing the different type of grid. Um, I'm going to go with graph paper and crumpled paper just because I like it. Uh, I actually have a custom grid set up where I have different spacing and division set up. You can change the color of the grid lines and you can mess with the opacity of the grid lines as well. So I'm going to turn this down quite a bit just because I don't need them to be that dark. And we are on our way. So like I said, we're going to be wireframing using the Concepts app and the Wire tool. Really just two things that you're going to need to make sure that you have before you get started. One is you're going to want to gather your research. An example of some of your research might be user personas. Who are your users? What's important to them? And what problem are you trying to solve? By answering these questions, you'll have a better idea of who you're designing for, which will lead you to design the right product. Another type of research you might have is competitive research. So does this product exist already? What are the successes of that product? And what are some pain points of that product? These can help you answer what's already been done before and whether that's been successful or failure. From there, you can build to hopefully create a better product. Last, but certainly not least, are common design patterns. So there's a lot of existing design around you and you should really take advantage of that. You can learn from it and build upon it and you really don't need to reinvent the wheel every time you sit down to design something. So you're going to want to look at things like what's common on your platform. So for example, the hamburger icon to represent a menu on a mobile site. Uh, what's common in your industry. So what do people also in the fitness industry, for example, use on their applications? And what's common in your niche? So you want to look at people who are in a very similar space to you. And these people are also probably going to be your competitors and try to pick apart what they're doing specifically to target that same audience that you probably both share. And that's all you need outside of having some sort of tablet. So how do you get started? Well, it depends. What are you going to be designing? For this example, I'm going to be using a design prompt generator. And I got this coffee shop settings dialog. Next up, I do some ideation. I do this by breaking up the prompt into different sections and trying to come up with as many related words as I can. You'll notice that I included several design examples that I referenced while doing this. I want to reiterate that there's nothing wrong with referencing other people's work, especially if you're feeling stuck. As long as you're not copying directly or stealing, referencing others' work is perfectly fine. And you never know what might spark something in you and lead you to have a major breakthrough. So all I'm going to do with this is start drawing some very basic high-level ideas that I have for designs. Wireframing is primarily done in grayscale, which just means that it uses multiple shades of gray, almost no color, no images, and nothing overly complicated. Because the whole point of wireframing is really just to work out the structure of the design. So think of this as like assembling a skeleton of what the design could be. So you can see that I've already started working on a mobile app. I've added my back button, a profile picture, some headers, some text, and even some toggles. And I also added a little bit of a legend on the side just to show you what these little icons that I'm drawing mean. There's no real specific set of icons you should use when wireframing, but there are definitely some common ones. You can use whatever you want as long as you can clearly communicate your intentions and in your wireframes. As you can clearly see, this doesn't have to be neat. This doesn't have to be clean. The idea, again, is just to get your ideas out. I usually just kind of jump into it and randomly draw a bunch of different things at the top of my mind before I really sit down and focus just because I think that the first couple of ideas that I get are usually trash and I like to get those out of the way first. So you might ask, how am I coming up with these trash designs in the first place? 
This is why you did all of that research. I'm literally drawing from things that I saw and the designs that I looked at during the research phase, as well as things that I've seen in different apps that may be completely unrelated, but they're just things that I'm used to seeing or things that I particularly liked or things that may just be stuck in my mind. Uh, It doesn't really matter where you're getting this inspiration from. Like I said, you're just trying to kind of warm your brain up so that you can kind of get the sludge off the top of your ideas and get to the better ones below that. So here's where I start to feel semi-confident that I can produce some decent wireframes. And I sit down and kind of think like, okay, what are the very specific tasks or needs that I want to accomplish with this screen? What's important to accomplishing this goal? And I will take that list and I will start doing the same thing as before and sketching out a bunch of different ideas. This time, I usually use that list on the left as a sort of checklist so that I make sure I get all of the things I need onto each wireframe. And again, I'm adding little annotations just to be absolutely certain that I am absolutely clear about my intentions for each of these designs. And this is just me double checking that everything that I included actually needs to be on these screens. I also identified the potential need for a logout button, which I hadn't identified up until this point and is really the whole basis for why we do this exercise. But now that I'm fairly certain I have absolutely everything identified, I start drawing out what I would consider the real wireframes. So these aren't the sludge that are sitting at the top of my mind. This is the more thoughtful and intentional ideas that I have. And you'll see a lot of similarities from wire to wire. There's nothing wrong with this. As long as there is at least one thing changed between two wires, you can consider that a separate idea. In fact, a really good rule of thumb is that if you're stuck on coming up with a new wire, you might just take something that you've already worked on in that session and just change one thing about it. Just make it a goal for yourself to change one single thing. Usually what I do is if I feel stuck, I try to force myself to draw at least one more thing and that might lead to one more thing and that might lead to one more thing or sometimes it just stops right there, but it doesn't really matter as long as you feel like you got enough of your ideas out. You've exhausted your ideas because after that, you're going to look at each of your wires critically and try to pick out the different pieces that you like from each one. What I like to do is actually take the different pieces and duplicate them and rebuild a new screen. Um, But using the select tool is a paid feature of concept. So you can just kind of redraw each screen as you like it. It's not, you know, the quickest or easiest way to get things done, but it is a way of using the app totally free. And here I'm just building out three different screens using all of the different elements that I liked across all of my different wires. So really just a best of the best at this point. Of course, I'm going to add annotations as usual just to make sure that my design is as clear as can be. And then I start evaluating the three different wires against each other. Again, these aren't final. These won't necessarily be what we put into production. But we do want to narrow it down to the one that we're going to pursue for a more sophisticated design. So we look at them and ask ourselves, what's easiest to use? What makes the most sense to the user? Does each screen really meet our goal or is there one that stands out? And what could go wrong? It's better to know and accept and account for what could go wrong up front versus finding out on accident later. Now, I chose number three because I felt like it was friendliest to the user. It has clear hierarchy of information from the big, bold greeting at the top down to the smaller information about the person's account. And I really like how it evokes this idea that the account information is literally tied back to the user. It accomplishes this by nesting the little visual card with the rewards information and the store credit card information. So the user automatically associates that with themselves because of the profile picture. It makes it feel very personal. It makes it feel very relevant and the user is much more likely to pay attention to it. 
and you are officially done wireframing. You can stop right here, or if you're like me and you kind of just wanted to see this through to the next step to see what a more high fidelity version would look like, you can continue on as I have. This isn't required. This is really just an extra level that I wanted to do, mostly because I just don't know when to stop. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you liked it. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know so I can be sure that I get to them. But other than that, enjoy watching me overcomplicate this to the fullest extent, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.